Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome back to Max Outdoor. I'm Mac, and I want to show you some knots. Well, a couple of knots and a couple of hitches. So I was at camp this last weekend and whenever I go camping I use a handful of knots and a couple of hitches to do everything that I need to do around camp for um, hanging a, a clothesline or putting guy lines on a tent or whatever I might need to do. I tie really only a couple of knots. So I thought maybe I'd show you the couple of knots and the couple of hitches that I like to use the most. So what are the difference between knots and hitches? A knot is used to tie a rope to itself or another rope. A hitch is used to tie a rope to something. As you can see while I was taking that down there's a couple of knots involved with that and we'll get to that in a sec. But the first thing I want to show you, probably the most common knot that people tie. It's a square knot. So when you tie a square knot, I have a little thing that I chant to myself, which is right over left, left over right, to make sure you tie a square knot correctly. Let me show you how that goes. First, you take two tag ends like this, and you do right hand over left hand, or right tag over left tag, and you make this little X, like so. You loop it around itself, and then you, write, then you put left tag over right tag, and you loop it around itself. And what you end up with is that perfect little squarish shape. It looks like two teardrops, and it looks the same from both sides. And that is a square knot. Unfortunately, a lot of people tie what we refer to as a granny knot, which is, see if I can tie it wrong, we're gonna go right over left, and then right over left again. And what you end up with is this funny knot that doesn't quite work. It's got these two angles and it wants to slide and eventually it'll probably tighten up and stop sliding. But the problem with this is, A, if it doesn't s tighten up, it slides and pulls apart and if you're supporting any weight with it, that's a bad thing. Also, once it tightens up, it's very difficult to get those out. So again, I'll show you right over left, left over right. Perfect square knot every time. And all you need to do to untie a square knot, even after it's been under load, is wiggle it and it'll come out like that. That is a simple square knot. So the second knot I like to use is called a bowline knot or bowline if you see it written down. And a bowline is a nautical knot that sailors and boat people will say, oh, you use a bowline to tie two pieces of rope together. But I like to use a bowline to tie a loop in a knot. And most commonly, I use this knot to tie guy lines to tents or ropes to backpacks or what have you. Anytime I need a loop that I can rely on, I use a bowline knot. And a bowline knot goes like this. You take the rope and you make a loop in it, like so. I like to make sure that the tag end goes over the main line end, so you have a loop like that. And then you come up through the loop from the bottom, you go around the main line and back down through the loop. And that is a bowline knot. And this knot makes a loop that you can tie through things or two things that won't slide. It won't slide down and cinch down on itself like that. And it remains removable. So this is what that knot looks like close up. It's got this little teardrop shape and then a band around there and on the back, you can see that that band actually makes a loop. So that is what a bowline knot looks like. Let me tie it again. Main line, tag end. You take a a bite as they say, or you make a loop, and you come up through the loop, you go around behind the main line and back down through the loop. And you pull it all tight. You hold these two together and you pull it tight. 
And again, this one remains removable even after it's been under a load for a bit. And obviously the, my pulling on it like this is not a bit, but it tightens it up pretty good. And then again, you can just loosen it up by wiggling the knot and pulling on the ends and it comes right out. So those are the two knots that I use most commonly. Now for the fun part, the hitches. I'm gonna find a stick and I'm gonna show you a clove hitch. A clove hitch is almost always the beginning of lashing. So if you're setting up a, a lean-to or you're building some kind of maybe pot holder out of, out of sticks, you know, you can build a tripod pot holder, um, you're gonna start with a clove hitch. So a clove hitch goes like this. You put the rope over the top of whatever you're tying to. In this case, it's a little stick. And then you come around and you overlap the, the main line. So you have this kind of X shape. And then when you come around, you tuck the tag end underneath both parts of the X that you've made. And then you pull and see how it ends up with a loop like that and a loop like that with this diagonal over the top. And when you pull that tight, it cinches down. And when you pull on it, it stays tight. And in the olden days, and if you've ever watched a Western and you've watched a, a cowboy throw a horse's lead over a hitching rail, this is the knot that they're allegedly tying because it comes out fast, just like that, and it holds tight. And there's your clove hitch. And obviously it <laughs> works a lot better if you don't have it on a stick that's flying around in space. But there's a clove hitch. Let me demonstrate that one more time. Okay, rope over the top. And a lot of the cowboys will go whoosh and they whip it around there, but we don't wanna do that because we're learning. Wrap it around one time, make the X. Take that tag end put it underneath both halves of the X, like that. See that? And then you pull it tight, just like so. And once it's tight, it does not slide. And that's the important thing about a clove hitch. And you recognize that clove hitch because the main line goes in and the, and the tag end comes out and it looks like it just looped around the, whatever it's tied to, but there's this piece that goes across almost perpendicular to the main line in the tag end. That's a clove hitch. Looks like that on the back. There you have it. All right, and for the last hitch, which really isn't a hitch, actually, if you think about it, it's called a trucker's hitch. And I use a trucker's hitch to put up a clothesline so that we can hang towels and things somewhere around the camp after we've been swimming or what have you, it's a great way to hang stuff up, to, to hang a, a line up between trees so that you can use it for a ridge line for backpacking or like I said, a clothes line because you know how it is with camping, especially if you have kids, you need a clothes line. Additionally, it's called a trucker's hitch because you can use it to tie stuff down in the back of your truck or to a trailer, which is, probably more what I use it for than making a clothesline, but it's really handy for that. And you'll find that it's, it's called a trucker's hitch, but it's really more than one thing. It's two hitches and a knot. So we're gonna start with a length of rope and I'm gonna tie this up between here. And as you saw at the beginning of the video, I, had, I already had it put up because I had to practice it to make sure I could show it to you. <laughs> so here we go. We're gonna start with a clove hitch, just like I showed you. Like that. And maybe you could even use a bowlin for this, or in the case of this particular piece of rope, I actually have a loop end on the other end. It's a spliced loop end. And that would work just as well for, uh, for a start to this knot. But, so here's my clove hitch, just like, I, just like I just demonstrated. And once we pull it tight, it won't slide anymore. There. And then you take the rope and you're gonna put maybe about here 
This is the extra bonus knot. You're gonna put a slip knot in it. Just a simple slip knot like that. And then you're gonna take this rope and you're gonna run it around, in this case a tree, or whatever you happen to be working with. And you're gonna feed that tag end through the slip knot you tied. Get it up to the right height. And so the tricky part about this particular hitch is that sometimes you tie this slip knot so that when you pull it, uh, the slip knot actually slides down and, and, and fails. Basically, it fails the whole setup. So you have to remember to tie the slip knot so that the loop of the slip knot comes from the end that the tag ends on. It should not come from this side, it should come from this side. And once you've done it correctly, you can pull this and it will tension this whole thing just like a pulley, like that. And now that's like guitar string tight. My dad used to say when I was young, tune up your, tune up your ropes. When, you, when you're tying something down, you should be able to, to ring it like that. And it should vibrate like a guitar string. Maybe not so tight that you break your your, your trailer stakes or you break your rope, but definitely make it nice and snug because as rope sits taut like this, it will stretch and loosen up. And as you add weight to it, it will also stretch and loosen up. So that's the beginning of our, of our trucker's hitch. Clove hitch, straight line, square knot. Now we're gonna do the last hitch that is required to finish this and it's called a half hitch. And I'm sure many of you know what this is, but it goes like that. This is a single half hitch. It just, you just loop through itself. Oh, and to prevent the, the, the trucker's hitch from sliding after you've fed it through, you just pinch it right here like that. And once you've put this half hitch in there, it stops it from sliding. So now you can let it go and see it's still quite tight. And then for security, you can put a second half hitch in here, or what I like to do is I like to put the half hitch over the entire loop of this uh, piece of rope so that it pulls the rope together like that, and then we'll double half hitch it to make it extra secure and make sure it doesn't slide out. And in the case where you have a lot of rope left over, it takes up a little more of the rope. So then we'll just go like this or what have you. We'll just take up the slack, loosely in this case, and now you have your clothesline. And that is a trucker's hitch. I will do my best to link all of these knots in the description of the video so that you can actually see them uh, written down in pictures and stuff like that. If you have any questions, stick them in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I appreciate your time. Thanks for watching.